hi and welcome to another friends like us live with marina franklin and evelyn frick yes and we're here for you today if you're just joining us and i know we always start early to grab our facebook viewers and mm -hmm. listeners and if you're just joining us and you didn't know what this is all about this is about marina franklin that's me my podcast friends like us and we do this to promote the podcast, to promote me, to promote Evelyn, to just have fun going live. I know everyone's moved on from like, you know, Zoom and stuff, but we still do it. <laughs> and if you didn't know that I have a podcast, yes, I have a podcast. It's called Friends Like Us, and you can get it on all the platforms. Yes, I have mine on today. Almost oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, this color ran out, by the way. So oh. uh, th there's only black ones now. I had to trade it up because, you know, oh, production, nice. I guess, in China. Oh, it's, you yeah. Know, it's been slow, so. Sure, sure. That makes sense. So, Evelyn, yeah. tell me, how you doing? How you been? This has I'm been a good, good week for you. What's going on? Yeah, I'd say so. Um, I've just been super busy um, with my um, my job um, for, um, I can't really <laughs> reveal what we're doing at the moment, but I've been trying to figure out like TikTok and, and how, how that works. Because um, that was a like platform that um, I didn't immediately gravitate to when it when it first came out. Um, so I'm still kind of trying to keep up with <laughs> younger people. It's a lot, people. isn't it? It's a lot. Um, but I mean, now that like I can, um, I'm slowly like figuring it out. I can appreciate like how creative these like young kids are that are on um, the platform. Um, but yeah, so it's mostly been um, doing that. And then um, actually, I have just been... Um, figuring out plans for next week because actually i won't be on the stream next week because next saturday is my birthday so oh happy birthday me. evelyn oh, ahead of you. time one week ahead of time happy birthday yeah how, can you say how old you'll be oh yeah i'll be 25. whoa growing up getting there look at you i feel like i've now that i think about it i feel like i've seen you since you like you were younger when you came in yeah. the beginning, I remember you just walking in. I was like, look at this little girl. I was, yeah, I was fresh out of college. I think this was, yeah, I think I first met you in like 2019, wow. um, like really late 2019. So I was like 22, I think. Um, yeah. I know. Yeah. So we've known each other for, for a while now. Um, which is Everyone's saying cool. happy birthday. Look, oh, okay, mm -hmm. yes. And look, you can do this now too. Do you have that ability? I, yeah, I'm like still trying to figure but it I'll out. Do it. I'll do it for now. Just okay. so you have a, you can see. Mm -hmm. So look, happy birthday, Evelyn. Everyone's wishing you a happy birthday. That's and that's so sweet. Nice. Look, Thank Mike Dickatu, who's always here. Thank you for always being a part. Eric Prince, Nina. Look, so nice. hey. Oh. That's now, cute. what would you say, you know, 22, 25, does it feel like a big difference? Do you feel different? I do. <laughs> yeah, I definitely do. I think I, I feel a little bit, um, actually a lot more settled in my, in my life. Um, at 22, I was still trying to figure out, um, like, what I wanted to do for a career and, like, where. I, like, just moved to New York, but I wasn't entirely sure that I would, like, stay in New York. Um, and now I feel very, um, like set on, you know, living here for, for the rest of my life. Um, Ooh, the rest yeah. of your life, no Vermont for you, huh? Well, actually, now that I think about it, I mean, we'll, we'll see if, you know, you know, the rent prices, uh, you know, I know. kick me out. <laughs> um, although, are they yeah, trying you? Are they trying you in your new place? Um, not as of yet, as of yet, the management company that owns the building that I live in has actually been like pretty great. Um, so I haven't had any issues to deal with. Um, but also like we've only lived here for like, I'd say about two and a half months now. So okay. we'll right. see what happens when like we, we try to renew the, the lease hopefully next <laughs> year. Yes. Yeah. Two, They're two saying months. that the rent is now at $5,000 as a month in new york city yeah as like i think is that like the average i think the average is that that is? yes That's crazy <laughs> five 
thousand. And you know, the housing market is so crazy now that people yeah. are just renting. Um, so the landlords where they were struggling in 2020 and 2021, now they're like, it's their world. Yeah, it's really like I've read a lot of like articles and things about um, like bad experiences that people have had with landlords and companies and it really like how much landlords are allowed to get away with. Um, it's really shocking. And it really is just kind of like, oh, thank you. Bertha. Um, it's like, how do they not like see like their tenants as like human beings who are just trying to like live in a home? Um, it's yeah, it's just it's um, it's not good. <laughs> I like a salon, my brother. <laughs> also, like, so you're saying you feel a little more settled, you kind of know which direction you're going in. Um, and, you know, like, Shannon and I were secretly talking about how wonderful you are, just so you know. And um, I just saw you blossom like a flower. And it's just exciting. I, I love seeing, you know, people start off with one direction figuring it out, finding their lane yeah. in this industry of what they, where they want to go, you know, yeah. what they want to do. Exactly. Um, you know, cause you start out, sometimes you just want to do stand up only or yeah. improv only. And then you find out, Oh, maybe this is where I, I fit in. You know, that's what yeah. I always tell young comics to just do your best. But you know, sometimes it's not always what you think where you, where you're going to make that consistent job choice or, or land. Yeah. And you're yeah. still very young. Yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. It's like, it's so weird because I definitely, 25, this is like the first uh, birthday coming up for me where I'm like, oh, that feels old. But every time like I say that in my mind, I'm like, it, it, I'm a baby. <laughs> you're half <laughs> my <laughs> age. <laughs> <laughs> Sunscreen. Yeah. Sunscreen yeah, now. I, oh, I have. Yeah, yesterday, um, my girlfriend and I went to the beach after work and it just slathered on sunscreen. I was like, I need my skin to hold up. I'm talking to everyone who's like, like we. I think we mentioned this um, of the owner of Gotham, Chris Mazzelli. He looks yeah. so young. And he said all his friends, like he's, I think, approaching maybe 60. Wow. Maybe. And um, he said his friend was just like, fuck you, man. Cause he was so upset and he's like, I just wasn't like wearing suntan lotion out in the sun, you know, when like in the eighties, uh, when yeah. I was like in high school, I don't, were you born yet? What? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. When you weren't even where you were like, maybe thought maybe your yeah. mom and dad were like meeting in a bar. Like that was the yeah. point when pe people, I saw people just sitting out. My neighbors would just lay in the sun. Oh wow. And put baby oil. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. That cannot it's like, be good. You gotta protect protect that young skin girl. I know. Well, I'm hoping I mean, like you've seen my dad who's like 60. I know he looks amazing. I'm really hoping I mean my mom looks is is also 60 and looks, you know, you know, gorgeous, but I'm really hoping I get my dad's aging genes because he is he looks like he could be in his forties. <laughs> Well, I also find like, you know, Jewish women, I think they age pretty well Thank overall. You. I think there's a, a there's some melanin in there that works for you. <laughs> you know what Thank I'm saying? I sure hope so. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, uh, we don't know if Jessica was going to join us today. This is a I don't want to say it's a fingers crossed moment because whenever <laughs> he's not here, it's it's actually we get to talk. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, hey, Stace. Stays. Hey, I'll just pop it on from my class today. Want to say hi and send a little love. Hope to see you all next week. What class is this? I she's been talking about this class. Yeah, she teaches it, or she's a part of it. You're I'm a part. Where, where are you going, Stace? <laughs> Have you told us about this class? I don't. What's going on with you? Yeah, I'd love to know. Um, what else? So the podcast this week was really good. We talked about abortion a great deal. The uh, Supreme yeah. Court and what they're the chopping block and what they're doing. And what do you think about what they've just passed with Nancy Pelosi? Is, is it going to do anything? Oh, the, like in the, yeah, the, I saw that yesterday. It was like a reproductive health bill. Right. Um, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I obviously like, I think it's good that they're, they're trying something. I mean, I think it's probably going to get shot down in the Senate. Um, 
but they always well, excited yeah. with the when they pass something in the house and then we all know why are you excited wait for it to pass yeah exactly i mean i'm interested like i was interested in the executive order that biden signed maybe it was last week or two weeks ago that was basically it um like outlined the fact that he um wants to support uh keep abortion legal at a federal level um or at least make abortion keep abortion access um uh, at a federal level um but it basically from my understanding of it his executive order was just that like he wants to do those things, but it didn't really outline like how he was going to achieve um, those those goals. Uh, so we'll see. I don't know. It just, it just seems like uh, Biden and the Democratic leadership really do not have a plan at this point, which is pretty disconcerting. They're asking um, him not to run. Uh, yeah. Oh, look, Jenny's like, yes, Jews age so well. Why is that? <laughs> Um, so yes, um, but it is, uh, oh, I forgot my point. <laughs> That's what smoking marijuana does. By the way, I, I am going to say this, that maybe they shouldn't have legalized marijuana because I, I swear to God, I smoke way too much. I'm going to, I'm going to be useless and null and void at a point. Um, but I was did you saying, see that in, oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. You go ahead. I was just going to say, did you see that in Minnesota, they accidentally legalized edibles <laughs> at the state level? It was because they were, um, basically what happened was the Minnesota, uh, GOP did not read the bill carefully enough and didn't realize that they were, um, um, Ooh, here. Um, <laughs> but oh, they voted here. to um uh they didn't read it carefully enough so, and the bill which democrats were in support of was legalizing um uh edibles and uh republicans just didn't read it clearly enough so they also supported the bill and then only after they passed it they're like oh wait we didn't want to support this so now um edibles are legal in Minnesota and technically it's classified as a food. So there's no tax on like weed gummies or anything like that. Um, which I, I think is very, um, <laughs> very funny and incredible for, for Minnesota. I'm very happy. I always worry about the kids accidentally eating edibles. That is true. Yeah. Um, that's, that's one I'm of those so things. I like, I know that like a lot of my friends um, use edibles, but like none of uh, my friends have like kids. But yeah, I, I didn't think about that. But yeah, I guess it makes sense. Like if you're. I'm so like, worried. Um, I mean, they were eating like Tide Pods, you know, for laundry. Yeah. yeah. So they got, they, they have these new lock bags oh, um, yeah, that, you, you know, so that you have to, op you have to, you can't be a, you, if you're a child, you can't really open it. But here's the thing. If you're an adult, you probably can't open it either. You're going to be so high. You're going to be like, well, where do I, how do I open this thing? It's like, that's so funny. <laughs> uh, but what I was going to say earlier is like Biden probably should not run again. I mean, yeah, he should just, just, you know, God bless him. He tried and yeah. you know, it's not much he can do. Whoopi keeps asking that question on the view. Not that I watched the view as much as I used to. But yeah. she always says, well, what can he do? And it's funny to find out the president really doesn't have Trump seemed to do whatever he wanted. Yeah. And yeah. Biden doesn't seem to take that playbook he, or he can't. But it seems like Trump couldn't either. But he tried. He, he seemed to get away with a lot. You know, he really did. And yeah, I mean, I think a lot of it is just that like. Trump did a lot of things, which we would like people are like, oh, there's no decorum in that. Like, the, you know, the the office of the president, like, shouldn't have that power, blah, 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 blah. And like, I definitely agree with those ideas, but we're kind of just past the point of like, no return, basically. And like, if Democrats like have any chance of like standing up to Republicans and not losing the House, um, or our very thin margin in the Senate, which basically doesn't exist because of Joe Manchin. Um, like he needs to actually do things yeah, <laughs> and, and really just kind of push things through, um, with executive orders like Trump did. Yes. Basically. That's 
like, come on. Remember the, oh, we got to bring on the man of the hour. He's waiting patiently, which is nothing like his personality. Nothing at all. You guys get ready for David Jessica. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Nice to be here. I didn't even give us a clap. No, you didn't. I didn't barely <laughs> hear anything because it's raining so hard. It is raining, yes. Yeah. It's raining. Oh, it's not raining yet in Brooklyn. It's what? raining crazy it's here. It's pouring like crazy. I can hardly hear it. It's all on the air conditioner. It sounds, you know, It'll it's probably hard. This way at some point. Hi, everybody. Evelyn, you look beautiful. Marina, as always. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> I mean, I just, you know, bathed a little bit. Well, actually, Marina, your skin <laughs> looks really good. Oh, thanks. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and there's no filter on this this platform. But, I, you know, we were just talking about suntan, sun tanning in the, and we were talking about Chris Mazzelli, how he said he never, he always sunscreened. He was never sitting out in the sun. Who says that? Chris Mazzelli from Gotham Comedy Club. Remember when he was talking about that? About right, how that's he, right, right. That's why he still looks, you know, you just can't sit out in the sun. Vitamin no, C, everybody, can't. though. You, vitamin C makes your skin glow. You cannot sit out in the sun. What I do, uh, being especially very pale, is, um, you know, I'll, be, I'll put on sun lotion, but I'll sit in the sun. For, that's why I can only go to my friend's house who has the cabana. I don't understand people that go to the beach for the day. You know, even if you're under an umbrella, it's just too much. My friend has a cabana. It's got a fan in there and a refrigerator and all this stuff right so uh, but i will sit out for 20 minutes you can sit out for like 20 minutes and that and that should be good enough for anybody those people that you see sitting out there for hours my old boss used to look the like time. the time keeper i mean I, she was disgusting let alone her smoking of cigarettes and just never eating but coffee cigarettes and sitting in the sun for eight full hours nine to five every friday saturday sunday for 30 years if I showed you a picture of her, you would it would make people rethink how they look uh, go in the sun. Mm -hmm. And D, I'm only hijacking the show for the first two minutes. You can't give me two minutes. I can't talk for two minutes when I come on. Come on. <laughs> I love that. Jenny says the flowers make it look like. Yeah, like I have like, oh, I'm messing it up. Like I have flowers in my hair. Yeah, oh, that's pretty. Thank you, Ted. That makes me very I got happy. these at the flowers market possible. at the at the farmer's market today. Oh, you did? Ooh, nice. See those beautiful flowers? And I thought I saw your boy. You know, they're overexcited. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love that guy. Overexcited I brother. I, I thought I saw guy. him, but it was another one. It was another oh. brother, but he wasn't as excited. And I almost took a picture of him, and I was like, don't. No, no, just. And then I saw I was like, oh, no, he's he's normal. I just sent you a picture. Um, yes, I said, yeah. That on the left is my fucking nephew, jacked. Oh, my God. He was in uh, Heather's. He was in Heather's the musical. Oh, well, he played with the like football players. Yeah, yeah. But he's the guy on the left. Watch That's your mouth, Ricky. Ricky uh, is just up for charges for sleeping with his his nephew. I think. Ricky who? Uh, oh, Ricky Martin. Yeah, I saw yeah, that. Ricky I'm Martin. I'm not sleeping with my nephew. My sister just <laughs> sent me that photo. I just talked to him on the phone. I and she told me he he told me he was jacked, and because he said some girl ghosted him. And he's like, and I'm Jack too. I really worked out hard for this role. And then my sister just sent me this photo. And I was like, and she's like, this is why he was working out so hard. I mean, there's no one in our family that's ever looked like that ever. I mean, just how ever you've that's never defined. You have like, other guy. Do you have, have you ever had abs like that? Like just a little no. bit? No, never. Not like that. <laughs> I mean, my dad used to make fun because, you know, you take off my without working out. I looked OK. You know, everybody looks OK young, but that's jacked. That's impressive. He worked at it. All right. I'm uncomfortable with you. He's not a douchebag. He's an OK kid. He's looking that, for what about that Ricky thing, though? I know I you, didn't hear you about would that. never do anything overseas, like that. As you know. Ooh, Ricky Martin is in could yeah. face up to what 50 years in prison for... i saw that i like i I've just seen headlines about it i haven't like actually looked into the news about it um but it just if uh the the allegations are true um it the thing is like right now the rhetoric that the gop is is turning to about uh gay people is uh 
returning to the idea that uh, gay people and trans people are groomers, they're pedophiles, um, uh, it, all that. Um, so <laughs> this does not help our case. Well, there is something to it. I mean, I've you know all the movies I've ever seen that seems to be the issue. So, well, that's really not <laughs> Wow, you're, I grew up wow, all, all you're the, wow. All the all the movies I ever grew up on, all the trans and gay people are all pedophiles. You're absolutely right. That's the way yep. we used to think it. That's why you know, Silence of the Lambs, stuff like that. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, which is, I, I love Silence of the Lambs. Is she a yeah, big fat person? That's a pretty good impression. <laughs> Thank you. I, uh, um, yeah. So uh, not, here, I'll show you the, the article. I'll share my screen again. Um, but here it is where he's, sorry. Oh, that's my little. That's my G how my Gmail looks. Sorry that you have to see all that. <laughs> I always worry that I'm like uh, showing too much. I think you're okay with this. Well, you should worry about some some of it, but be, you know, be prepared at three o'clock on Saturdays. You know, to have what's up, knowing that you're going to show your screen. You know what? Jessica was trying to tell me that I wasn't prepared and that I need to be better. I, you know? I, did you hear that, I, Evelyn? That came out, I, wait. Then it came out the wrong way. That is not. I just wanted you to make sure that I'm gonna, safe I'm gonna, I'm gonna do you like the Irish girl did you if you keep it up. <laughs> You're gonna throw scones at me. She recently. You she goes, I, I apologize to him. No, and she didn't. <laughs> she definitely didn't apologize. But I found her mother while I was in Ireland last week, and uh, I said something to her. Okay, Ricky. You Martin know, there's Lord something denied. wrong with your daughter. She's got something touched in the head. Ricky Martin's lawyer denies the disgusting claim of sexual or romantic him. relationship with nephew. But then you look at Ricky, you know, he's had such an interesting career. Like he, he really yeah. just hasn't had a break. Like, it just yeah. seems like he's always getting into some, like he, he came out. It took him a while. There was a scandal about how long it took him to come out when he did come out. Right. It was like, mm. why didn't you come out before? Well, yeah. but why would you say why haven't you come up? You know, he's from our generation. But I'm just saying that he, like, he he can't win, and it now does, this it does seem that way. Yeah, it's like he did win because he got out of Menudo and made a real name for himself and was so huge. And then you're right, and then he came out. No one cared, which is a miracle, right? Because he's like I said, he I don't know how old he is, but he must be in his 40s or 50s. So he comes from a a generation of people that weren't allowed to come out or were very nervous to do it comes out. He still has a good career, but you're right. There's something about that guy. He's always in some form of trouble. And Ivanka Trump. I can't believe that. That's so weird, yeah. right? That's Ivana, Ivana Trump. Not Ivana. Oh, what did I say? Right. I've always said Ivanka. Well, the Ivanka's the daughter. Oh, I get confused. Oh. too. You know, what's weird when I know that she died, I thought back, uh, many years ago in the 80s, me and Attell, David Attell, were at the uh, Westway Diner after the after our late night at the Improv at like three in the morning. We ran into Jackie Mason and it was so exciting. Not Sheba Mason, Jackie Mason. And we were so excited. And I was like, and, and Jackie Mason calls over David goes, Dave, no, I want to talk to you for a minute. I'm like, oh, my God, Jackie Mason's calling us over. And David Attell, even back then in the 80s, couldn't have cared less that it was Jackie Mason or any kind of celebrity. And he goes, so what do you think of this Donald and Ivana Trump thing? Because they were getting divorced. Mm -hmm. And uh, Adele goes, I don't know, Jackie. I'm going to get something to eat. <laughs> Just like <laughs> it was such a big deal for this legendary comic to call him over, know his name, ask his opinion on something. And he's like, yeah, well, we're pretty hungry. <laughs> I've you never know, forgotten that. I, I love that scene. Well, of course, because he's David Tell. I it's know, like, but this you know? is in 1988 when he wasn't David Tell. You know, when he when he wasn't as crumudgety, even though he always was, which was always funny. But you know, that's what I'm saying. It's like not like he is now, where he could, you know, that's what you want him to do, almost. I just think of that scene of her, um, when she's in the with um, the first. Is it the first wives club? Or where they're all like screwing their husbands. I forget like Deanne, what movie. Diane Keaton and Golden yeah, Home, that and, movie. and yeah, she says, yeah. "Don't get mad, get everything." 
right. and that was just that that was a classic moment you know for well her. it seems like she did too like I she she didn't even come out of hiding at all she just seemed to keep to herself which was really smart you know you don't want to be associated with that guy anymore <laughs> No. Oh, Latinos. Oh, well, Ted Chambers is back to Ricky Martin. He's Martin is a Latino in Miami, not the most gay friendly community. I is didn't he know kidding? That. He's kidding, right? I didn't know that the gay. Is, I thought that was, was a huge friendly. gay friendly community. Well, well maybe not I now. think it's like a mixture. I know that like in the um, like in Miami, there's definitely like a pretty big gay community. But very also, big. I think a legendary like, one. I think it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think in. Um, I don't know, just with like any group, I think like the Latino community, there's with like Ricky Martin specifically, like I think there's a whole idea of like manhood as being like macho and machismo and like um, Ricky Martin is not that. Um, so that would certainly. It's weird, be though, because you would think Miami, it's like even, you know, we know that that governor is insane. Right. So but. In the, I mean, that's the thing about Miami is they were probably the first to be besides New York to be gay friendly in the sense yeah. that they just knew there's a bunch of gay guys in Miami. We don't care. It's in Puerto yeah. Rico. That's what everyone's, that's what D, D is like saying, look, it's in Puerto yeah. Rico. No, I know. I was just talking about Miami in general. Mm -hmm. It always yeah. seemed a very gay friendly, that Miami community, you know? Yeah. I have I mean, to I'm think. sure there, there, it is in certain ways and not in others. But now with that Ron DeSantos, who knows? Everything's being, uh, they're changing history as they go along. Sue! What up, Sue? I gotta say hi to Sue Gullah McQuillan. Sue Guala McKillen? McQu Sue, Sue Gullah Gullah McQuillan. So I used to work with her mom. They're like fam. They're my um. I was gonna say my Australian family. They are my Arizona family. They're originally from New York, moved to transplanted to Arizona. Oh, wow. Every Thanksgiving, I would spend with them when I first moved to New York, and I was working at the office with Sue's mom, Marge. Wow. Remember I told you about Marge, how there's not a name like Marge these days. <laughs> Marge is like my one of my closest friends, but really like family. So, hey, Sue, what up? How you guys doing? That's cool. That that was so nice. They you spent Thanksgiving with them before you got yes. like friends here and stuff. Well, I didn't have like, you know, it was hard to go home when you moved to New York. So that's what I'm saying. Why was it hard to go out. home? Money, you know? You're working and you're just like, I uh, can't really afford to go home every, so you know, nice. whenever so nice. I want. And Marge would always say, oh, come on, hang out with us. Aww. And uh, in, Marge is really funny, too. She 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 would always get mad at me for doing like offensive jokes, though. Right, Sue? She would go, don't do that joke. White people aren't listening to it the correct way. She got mad at me, <laughs> mad at me for one of, my, one of my inward jokes. She goes, white people here aren't laughing at it the way you think. Don't do that joke. And I was like, Marge. She's like, they they like that joke for a different reason. Don't do it. Marge is white, by the way. That's so, so funny. I mean, that last name, right? Um, so, hey, we're doing well. It's so good. It's so good to see you, too. And um, tell me about that product. I want to promote the product. There's a uh, ad arrest where you, you wear it around your neck. You know, those when you're on a plane and you got to. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just need to add a little rest on your neck, because yes. Uh, let's see what's what Ted Chan. If you're in, on Miami Beach, you're safe. Anywhere else, it's sketch. Right, that makes perfect sense. What else is going on in the world besides Ricky assaulting his? I nephew? don't know. I haven't. Um, I haven't checked any news. I just came back yesterday. I saw that um, on Twitter this morning that apparently um, Quinta Brunson and ABC are being sued by someone who's alleging that they stole the idea for Abbott Elementary. Um, <gasps> no! Is, no! Okay, but I read, okay, so I read an article about it and it basically just seems like this person was like, oh, I had a similar idea uh, for a pilot at this around that time. Um, and then it just seemed like it, it, it didn't seem to me, it seemed to me to be coincidental. I don't think, um, Quinta, um, or anyone at ABC stole that idea. Um, because you can have the same idea for a concept, but how it turns out, um, it, it could be completely different. Um, so yeah, but I, that was interesting. It is me. interesting. I mean, you know, you never know. I mean, I see 
this business is so tricky. That's why you got to register everything on Writers Guild when you come mm -hmm. up with an idea. You know, who you match up with when you have an idea. You got to be very, you got to think it all, all through. You know, yeah. I do find it fascinating, like on, not to switch it back to me, but I will, yeah. um, that everyone is using my soundbite. You know, um, that's, you know, I know I aged well. I'm oh, glad. That ought to hold the little bastards? Which sound bite? No, that's, that, sound. That, that's not even your line. You didn't no, create that. Wait, which <laughs> sound bite are you talking about? The one where I go, um, that's my black girl magic. Ageless. Woo! So it went viral. And mm -hmm. I just posted it because um, one of the twins used the sound bite for Tia. Tia. Oh, Tia Mowry. Mm-hmm. She oh, just wow. used the sound bite. But here's the thing, like, didn't tag me, which is fine. I'm just happy that she used it. But yeah. I don't get anything from everyone using that. And I'm really happy that it makes everyone feel good. But I just would like it if someone who's like a huge star would give me some credit for using yeah. it. I mean, I'll show it to you. You guys could talk amongst yourselves while I. Yeah. Shake a dang gang is too cryptic. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, yes, <laughs> shake a dang dang. Well, I just think a lot of people like working for a brand um, that is pretty prominent on social media. Like, I think a lot of like people just don't have very little concept of like photo use rights, photo usage rights, and then the same with like audio usage rights. Um, yeah. I think people on the internet are like, oh, because it's online, I can use this or I can repost this and it's okay. Um, but a lot of the times, like with photo use, like the person who took the photo owns the photo. You're really like, the, the law is very convoluted, I would say. But for the most part, you're really not supposed to like repost things online without permission from a photographer. I think the same is probably true. Um, for like audio stuff, so people just really don't know um, oh, that I they, have to they share should. with the sound. Sorry, is that um, the girl from the Black Twin show? Sister, That's sister? what I just said. Do you have to say Black <laughs> Twin show? Like what? The, what was is that wrong? Tia, with you? What, and, what was that show? Sister, Tia sister. And, what was it? Sister, sister? Yeah. That's what she looks like now. But then I yeah. look. You know, I'm black, so you'll never know. <laughs> That's my black. I'm, I'm a lot older than I look. You know, I'm black, so you'll never know. <laughs> That's my black. Yes, I'm, I'm a lot older twins, than I look. Not you know, black I'm black, twins, so you'll never Jessica. know. The black twins from uh, Sister Sister. <laughs> well, you <laughs> never saw black twins before. That's this what is made like it so that exciting. baby's daddy moment. Yeah. Oh my god. You know, I, if you want a fucking scorn, just got. I just throw the fucking scorn at your head. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yes, Jenny. They should at least tag me. Give me some credit for it. Because <laughs> if because <laughs> if that's such a good invitation. <laughs> if you want the fucking skull, I give you a fucking skull. It, it, made, it made my heart skip a beat. <laughs> I, so, it's so I said I was sorry. And you're not gonna hear you know if you if you that's just Irish culture, just cow. <laughs> if you can't handle the, the emotion. And if you can't handle the way I talk to you, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I said I was I'm sorry. sorry. I drove into that gas pump and killed us all. <laughs> I asked you. I asked you several times. Where did I get a ticket? Anyway, <laughs> did they? By the way, did the club ever pay you back for? Or did they? No, take care? I'm still trying to get that. I haven't even wow. got. I just told Evelyn. I still haven't gotten paid. That's I'm still so uncool. I'm, I'm going to get my money. No worries. No, I know you will, but that's not cool that they didn't take care of it instantly. I'm I'm dying to know what happens when Bobby Kelly goes down there and they don't tell him. <laughs> and should we tell like, him in advance? Like I've never seen Jessica laugh like that. Well, that was a really good invitation and a really good, if you guys weren't there and it's not on video, that is exactly the way it happened with the, the passion and the accent. Here's your fucking skull! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was because good. she makes everything about those scones. I'm going to see her today, you know. She and makes I'm... everything about those scones. She's always helpful. 
She's always given, she's like, I'll give you a scone. Just gonna bring a, I have no problem with dropping off and bringing you a nice scone. I keep telling her not to get me this scone. I'm like, I'm not interested in this scone. <laughs> and she's like, I'll come by. No, it's no problem. I'll come by. You I'll can tell her on. till you're whatever. She just won't. She wants to help. And you go, no, it's okay. And then she helps. And then she gets mad. <laughs> And it's really, really funny. You go. He didn't even appreciate the scones. I left them with his doorman. He never said thank you. Hey, come on, wait, wait to bring you a scone, and then you're gonna <laughs> act like this. Like she gets. Really... <laughs> it's so it's really messed up. <laughs> but again, it, it's just not as funny as Marcy and 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 Jen know, like from the Billy Joel thing that we just kept talking about scones and the the odds of. You know, we're talking about scones and I was all this stuff about scones, and then all of a sudden there's some a lady throwing scones at me in anger. I mean. It's extra funny for the people on this chat that know me from from the Billy Joel one. It's just I told one. Esty I told Esty the story. Esty was dying. Oh, she was, she was laughing so hard. Esty loves when uh, I'm in controversy of some sort. <laughs> when I'm in trouble, she loves Isn't it. That always. Yeah, yeah, it is actually all the time. <laughs> I when I was so you know I went to Dublin right. So I'm at yeah, this, we didn't think you were back. Yeah, I, I came back yesterday. So uh, I go to this guy and I'm like, uh, yeah, so uh, I'll have a Guinness. But I was wondering, when you make a black and tan, what do you put in? He's like, oh, we're not allowed to make those. And I'm like, what do you mean? And he goes, no, people get too drunk. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Just combining beer? And he goes, yeah, yeah. And his manager is walking around. He goes, what the fuck are you talking about? What are you doing? like? And I got the kid in trouble. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like That's how I opened my stay in Dublin. Like, he goes, well, it was this guy. And he was telling me that he had to have the black and tan. And I was like, <laughs> he's like, sir, I'm sorry that happened to you. I, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Should I, should I scold him? And I'm like, no, no, I'm, I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> it was, it was I just walk in and I start trouble wherever I go. And it wasn't even, I didn't do anything on purpose. <laughs> there is, there is something going on with the service industry though. I was in a, when I was in Chicago for the uh, picnic, I went to a after party, a bar or yeah. And the bartender was like, I can't accept tips. And I go, what? And my brother-in-law, we were like, we want to give you a tip. He goes, well, here, here's, the, just throw it in this thing because I can't accept it on the credit card and I can't accept it at all. And I, he goes, we're like, wait, what are you talking about? He goes, my manager, he doesn't like bartenders. <laughs> oh <my laughs> he doesn't God. like us, I guess. And he was just joking, but he was basically saying, yeah, he doesn't give care about how we make our money. So we put it in the the little tin that he had, which means that they all pull at the end of the night, which yeah. means that if someone messes up that night, it can mess up everyone's tip for the night. Oh my gosh. That's, so, to, yeah. that's, that's so, what's that's that's happening weird. though. There's a whole article. And then I went go back to you being in Ireland. There's a whole article about this generation and work and where it's going because we are about to hit. Well, they say we're not really hitting a recession, but you know, because the banks are okay, kind of whatever, but there's going to be a rude awakening for a lot of young people because the employees are going to be on the sort of like the upside of, yeah. of hiring um, and sort of what younger people are expecting because, you know, a lot of younger people are going, this is not worth it. I can go somewhere else and make more money. That's about to change. Yeah, Ooh. well, I know because I had to go get a job because I want to be one of those people like I can work from home. I don't want to go back to work, but eventually you have to go back. Kids, this is me, your Uncle Dave. Eventually, you're going to have to go back to work. <laughs> your parents can only pay for you for so long. You know, most of the women I know, and, and guys too, and they're 20, a lot of their parents pay half of their rent or all of it. It's a lot of comics, like the ones that are starting out that seem to have their parents pay for a lot of the stuff. Uh, uh, Marina, when we were starting, that, that wasn't a thing when we were starting out. Like, well, they didn't the, tell us. There were some. You think so? Yeah. There were some that were wealthy hanging out amongst well, us. But even the comics? Mm -hmm. oh, I didn't know I they, I, I you know, I they were know. walking around in plaid shirts like me, but they had money. Oh, I see. Because I've no, we always mm -hmm. wonder how a lot of the comics, when they're always around, like the young ones, you know, how they, how come they don't have jobs? And then we find out their um, parents are there's paying. some, At least there's half, some, or they pay something. Yeah, Not that's all. Right. with girls, with women. I know it's as sexist as it sounds. It doesn't bother me. I think I do the same thing, but I'm surprised when the guys get paid for it. That's odd. It's just there's a there is a uh, that's, that is the service industry is being treated very I think it's, it's a mess. hard it's a mess you know you know you that's, can't that's why yeah that's why everything's closing early 
You can't they get mad at the, you know, it's like, I don't even get mad at service. You know how you guys know, I love to complain. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, I do not do it with wait staff. Uh, very rarely, very, because I used to do it. I know how hard it is. Yeah. I know it's not easy. I know that people don't treat you like you're a human being. And But the one thing is, is like, and the managers are awful people. Yeah. And that guy at that bar was probably like, yeah, you know, you, you got him in trouble, Jessica. I know. Well, apparently in Ireland, you can't get fired. So it's not a big deal. What do you mean? I, that's what the girls told me after when I went to the hotel. They're like, well, no, they don't fire anybody in Ireland. I'm like, oh, terrific. Then there was no problem. I don't know. Like just culturally thing. or like? I don't know. I don't know whether it was a metaphor or <laughs> whether it's an actual thing. Maybe you have to go through a, a thing to make sure somebody gets fired. I, I don't know. Interesting. Oh, look at this. Just wait for this earnings season. The analysts are all going to revise down for it. Looking estimates are going to get slaughtered. I, okay, I, I kind of understand I some of that, but I don't really. I kind of do. But I do know, like, this Friday was the best trading day. It was the stocks were looking beautiful. I, I've entered stock, like, in interest in investing in stocks when everything was the worst it's been since the 1970s. <laughs> So I don't really know what it's supposed to really look like, like. But um, Friday was a very good day. That's good. Just so you know, Disney is up, Apple's back up. They're they're I mean they're really low, but they're back they're back up. And United Healthcare, I believe, is back up too. So hmm. that's uh, that's why I tune into this show. Get your stock tips. Stock tips. <laughs> I don't really know what I'm doing. I mean, corn was up for a little bit. I was waiting for this. This is what I was waiting for. Corn was up for like, corn had a good week. Hey, D is right. <laughs> Put up what D said. <laughs> How great would that be? I would watch that show every afternoon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <It's> incredible. <laughs> that would be amazing. I mean, I don't know. I think corn is good. Yeah, I mean, yeah corn. You know, because I, I got, I've run into, I don't, I'm not, I, I said this once to Jim Norton. I said, I'm not brilliant, but I, I kind of land in brilliant sometimes. He goes, you're not supposed to say that about yourself. That's what Jim Norton told me. <laughs> um, so look for the market to go up into the end of the next week. Oh, okay. I mean, it, it's looking good. But uh, buying a house is tricky right now. Um, I went to go see our friend Rachel Feinstein's home. You saw it? Yeah, beautiful. You know, I was, I was there too, right? So... Oh, yes, yes. She did tell me that you had a little spill. Yeah, but I, I it was very difficult. I, I kept my cool. I mean, Evelyn, I got... he got mad at a two-year-old <laughs> child. For, for spilling I get, something? I didn't get that angry as I normally do. Rachel I said you got really upset. I took, I took it down a notch. You have no idea how I normally get upset. I took it down. I did, I did get upset with the lad. <laughs> And, uh, and then that's I, what uh, toddlers do. Whenever you're around a toddler, you are just in the splash zone, like immediately. Well, I don't. I when I get spilled on, I get very up. It's something I cannot control. I, I think I handled it very well. I mean, yes, said, I got up for a second, Take but I didn't easy. raise my voice. I didn't raise my voice. What did she I spill on you? Orange soda. The, like the whole can, or was it just like an accident? It no, was an accident, can. right? The whole can. <laughs> well, she was grabbing for my phone, which I was letting her do, and then she spilled the. Uh, that's because they don't have anywhere to eat, so it was a small child's table I was eating on. You know, I was you're doing her a favor table. by coming over. I don't need to get spilled on too. You're at the kids' table. Yeah, well, that's all they had was a kids' table. <laughs> I was already, you know, my back was already hurting from eating in there, but I want to sit down and eat like a gentleman. I probably just should have remained on the floor, which I'm sure she would have spilled that too, <laughs> rotten kid. <laughs> I like this laugh better than the first one. Yeah, Look at this. Too. This laugh is like, this is like an audience laugh. This is a laugh that is like, I almost want to criticize the people laughing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's almost mocking. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. 
Well, yeah. I mean, look, it's it's uh, plus for some reason I wear these white pants and they're the o- only pants that get spilled on every single summer. You wore white pants to hang out with a toddler? I didn't know I was hanging out with the toddler when I wore them. I wore them. I was out in New Jersey doing something. And then she said, do you want to come over? And I came over on, you know, because she said I'm sad and lonely and I need a man. <laughs> All right, maybe not exactly like that, but well, she's um, in a big house by herself. In a big house by herself, a new house. Her husband, you know, works twenty-four hour shifts and stuff. So, uh, I wanted to help. I wanted to see the place. It's really nice. I think it's a lot know, of except floors, for that back, except for floors. that backyard area. But other than that, the backyard is interesting. I saw, we I we we saw a woman watering a graveyard. <laughs> I don't know if you can imagine. Well, it's there's a grave. Okay, I won't talk about too. <laughs> We keep trying not to bring it up when we go over. Well, you see how Jessica's face he got he's like, oh my god. Because Rachel's just like, I, I don't I don't want to talk about it. Okay, we will move on. <laughs> but we did see a woman like watering oh her my god. Well, she was watering her her bushes. Mm-hmm. And then behind that is the graveyard. So we're like, we were like, wondering why this house graveyard. was so cheap. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we won't talk about it anymore. <laughs> the good thing was. I saw there was a, a the next door neighbor had a Mets flag hanging from it. That made me very happy. Mm. You know, nobody likes. Where I'm going there. back there, I think this week, just to go see and hang out, make her feel good. What day are you going to go? I think Tuesday. I think I'm not oh. exactly. sure. I might be able to do that. Yeah. So I want to tell you. Oh, oh, go ahead, Evelyn. I was just going to say, like the thing that's like wild is like my girlfriend and I have had this conversation so many times, like. I don't think like we will ever own a home, which is like, really? for, yeah, I just like for people of like our generation, like I just don't like, and like we make like, um, I mean, well, I work for a nonprofit, so my, my salary isn't like amazing, but you know, um, my girlfriend, like really, you know, t- our combined income is like not, it's good. It's good. It, it works for us. But like, I just don't like our generation, like we don't aspire to to own homes because I, I think just like the amounts that we get paid like it's not like to save up for that like it, it would just take forever alex yeah. adelman does some material really good material about oh your generation God. not being able to own a home did you I see love, it yeah yeah the, where he's like um i bought this house in like 1985 for one raspberry <laughs> <laughs> um yeah he's he's good <laughs> I do think it's like an unfair situation with your generation as far as like, you know, equity, buying homes, and it, yeah. it's like what to do. I mean, the the interest rates are really high right now, but I do think it's about like continually, continually educating yourself about like programs that are available to you. Mm-hmm. Also, like getting rid of loan debt will be the most important thing for your generation, which I think... If I just got an email, if you're in the service industry, um, where you it's like nonprofit where you're not earning, I believe I you can get um, loan forgiveness. I will look into that. <laughs> I'll send it. I'll send it to you. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I saw that and I was like, oh, what? A, I work with the Imagine Society, yeah. <laughs> but I don't think that's a enough. I think it has to be real service. Service. Um, okay. I forget what kind, but I'll send it to you. Yeah, yeah, sure. I'll send it. Jenny, Look, D says Biden is not canceling student debt, but it's on the it's on it's in it the conversation, like right? Which I, it never was before. At least yeah. they're talking about it. Whereas yeah. in my time, no one talked about getting rid of, you know, student debt. No one. Yeah. I just I feel like it would be such an easy win for him. Like he would get gain so much approval by canceling. I thought he did cancel it. No, I don't. I mean, he's he's delayed payments. Um, he keeps pushing it back. So I think for right now, people don't have to make payments until like August or something. Um, but they're not canceled or forgiven um, as of yet. Look, Jenny says, keep the faith, Evelyn. And that is true. Keep the faith and save. Always save. Put some money aside. Or get a new girlfriend who has a better job. I mean, that's the obvious answer. It's the obvious. She just got a raise, so. I'm just. I used to, you know, when I was working, you know, I made pretty good living. And I was like, boy, if I met a woman who had the exact same salary I did, we'd be doing really well. You know, I mean, it's funny. Two, Two incomes should be doing better, which is why you think you might want to 
seek another girl. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know what? You you are recently doing well. Me? Okay. A month ago, uh uh-uh. uh. You'd a be month ago bitch. things you'd, were really bad. Yeah. Yeah, you'd be the bitch in the relationship. Oh my god. I've been the bitch in the relationship multiple times even when I was doing well. <laughs> Most of the women I know make much more money. I I have dated some really cheap men in my life. And I had one that while I was on the date with him, I ordered Mm -hmm. food. And they said, oh, no, she's eating a set. She's ordering food. They actually said it out loud. Oh, my God. They didn't realize that I heard. I was like, I'm here. I can hear what you're saying. Yeah. That was probably one of those things we meant to say. She's ordering an appetizer. I don't understand. I've heard these stories before, and certainly you you know I'm not that guy. I I mean, let alone, let's just say on a first date, I've heard first date ones where the guy is the cheapest person ever. I mean, that seems like the most obvious. You pay for everything at least, but I, I always like paying for women. I like paying for all my friends. I mean, when I have money that, that don't make as much as I do, I always think the person that makes more money always pays. But um, with when it comes to women, and I hear the stories where these guys are just so cheap, I don't understand. And then they continue to go out with them. I, 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 I it, it, it boggles my we, mind. We hold, we have hope. Slim pickings. <laughs> they're slim pickings I, I and we so. hold on to hope and we don't want to, you good. know, as much as guys say that women just want guys for their money. It's not true. Like a lot of times I'll have faith in someone. I'll, I'll see their personality and I, I've learned to regret that whole <laughs> thought, but you know, you hope, you, you know, it's cause not all the boxes, are checked but most of them are yeah so you go well maybe I, but I then know. you find cheapness out money is is a is the real problem in relationships yeah, yeah. cheap but cheapness is a problem right away i mean this is why dan natterman can't i mean besides anyway the thing is i uh <laughs> oh look at marcy marcy's going off so many middle class american swing voters are vehemently opposed to the idea of loan forgiveness because they feel like they are paying others to get an education they didn't go to college themselves. That's interesting. We hadn't thought about that. That's good. Why do we even charge for education? Well, that's yeah. That's a whole other that's thing. Point. <laughs> Why? Why does anyone have to pay to get? Well, an what does a community college cost? Is that expensive? I don't. I'm. Asking. They're getting more expensive. Get, well, getting more expensive. They're getting more expensive, but also I would say like those like a two year degree from like a community college like the value of that is just it's decreasing rapidly oh, because like the like even like a bachelor's degree like the value of that is also decreasing like so many jobs are requiring you to now like have like a master's degree oh, um or yeah. more levels yeah well that's <laughs> exactly. what happened to me I, I went to school for teaching and mm-hmm. when i got out um it was just about the time where they were saying well now you need a master's for teaching Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, then I'm out because no more school for me. I've had it and I'm not good at it, even though I'm going to be I teaching. I can imagine it. you as a um, teacher. I well, guess you, well, you did, you did, you're doing like a, you're be, a that professor. Was, right? that, wait, that, professor. Was the, that was so funny, Evelyn. <laughs> Evelyn. Evelyn is so kind. And she goes, she, like, and from her heart, she yeah, was like, no, I, I really can't picture it i know and it's funny that i'm going to be a professor now but i don't have a master's in fact i just got my transcript and it's um it's not pretty you got a transcript like i had to get it my old college transcript and i'm like are you sure they're like well we just need to see that you got the credits i'm like so you don't look at the grades no we just need to see the credits i'm like but you're going to look at the grades i mean you're obviously going to look at them this is going to be very embarrassing for me but the students i teach won't see the grades right i mean it's they can't find it online your anywhere, right? still had the the records from the 70s uh yeah. i was surprised too when i was hoping they did not but they did and they sent it to me and it is very embarrassing and if you'd like to show it uh one day i just got it in a pdf form and i will <laughs> tell you that wines and winemaking was a d what i thought it was a wine tasting it turns out the the final was in french you know, it's all questions in French. I'm just shocked that that's a college class you would have the opportunity to take. Well, lots of colleges have those kind of classes. Why? Where did you go to school? That they I went to Vassar. Have Vassar. They didn't have classes like that, like you know, fencing and things like well, that. They had, yeah, they had fencing, but well, it's like, like that though. It's like a, it's a you know, just I don't a, know. I don't think of well. I mean, my girlfriend is a fencer, was a fencer. Um, is that right? So I, Isn't yeah, that funny that I brought her, that like, up? 
time. All Remember right, how we almost had that, that fencer on the podcast? Oh, yeah. What's and then she's. Again? Uh, Do you remember? Yeah, Dave, talking myself out of the job. Sarah right? Tebow, I'm an idiot. Yeah. She's an Olympic She's medalist French. now. Oh, and the French. Her on the podcast. That whole thing made me so mad because they reached out to us and then ghosted. <laughs> Yeah, we've had that. We've had some incredible people do that where they'll reach out. Remember we had like some the woman at in DC. Oh, Marsha Fudge. Yeah. Yes. And, and Marcia then they just Fudge. disappear. That's a horrible name. Um well I will I do want to show this story. I think this is kind of fun and ridiculous, but um that oh, I saw that. You know, she's <laughs> I know. I mean, not the fact that they're hospitalized after explosion involving s'mores in the Hampton store, but you know. What does it have to do with uh, Gwyneth Paltrow? She owns Goop. It's her store, Goop. It's oh, it's all a about. There was an explosion at a Goop store. I, I didn't know it was a store. I, I think they have like I. I think it started online, but I do like it. I mean, places like the Hamptons, they have locations. Yeah, the, uh, some seriously strange stories have surfaced over the years in regard to uh, the grant, the brand, but this one is right up there as police blotter item in the East Hampton Star explains two men caught fire in her store in the Hamptons after a most unusual explosion. And the no joke part of the story is that both men were hospitalized after the incident in Sag Harbor for treatment of burns. So uh, Goof, Where, at, at the store, they make s'mores there. Yeah, she does all kinds of it's stuff. A weird brand. Well, that's on you, man. If you start a fire in your store, you're asking for trouble. But what caused the explosion is what I want to know. It says here, Austin McGuire, upon arrival, he said he was informed that the stone candle holders were being filled with rubbing alcohol. Yeah, it makes sense. All of her stupid natural products right? aren't good for fires and and uh, and normal stuff it you know all that stuff is going to oh, cause that sounds so dangerous all that natural stuff is not good sometimes when you're when you have to you know keep a fire in a proper place well you see she says uh the information about rubbing alcohol and candies is factually incorrect and that no candles were in use at the time of the fire but whatever was happening mm -hmm. led to what the police blotter items describe as a large explosion in flames there's a picture of richard dreyfus on the bottom isn't that oh, uh, yes. Serena from Bewitched? He, he, stay focused, Jessica. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, always, I always get caught in those other stories. It drives me. I know. It's going to work for me every time. The infamous scene that got Bewitched canceled. Click. Damn it. I love the Blazing Saddles most love line was a mistake. <laughs> I, I will click on those every goddamn time. It's probably ruined my computer and it's not even poor. Yeah, you can't you can't click on I never click on those things like I do. The pop I go down the rabbit hole this. for hours. <laughs> How to shrink your, your prostate. I don't do that one. <laughs> Toenail fungus. Try this. I don't do that either. But the, <laughs> the stuff like that with the if they have a you know a bewitched question, <laughs> like I'm like, oh yeah. It is funny though because you know there are a lot of elderly they're they're looking at this and going oh yeah let's see <laughs> and then the they guy. get their credit cards stolen yeah, yeah. Well, I'm the guy though for sure because you know even when they have this you can't guess who this is most people can't pass this quiz and I'm like oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> they make those totally just for you for you can just get at this point I'm sure they're made for me. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're sucker. right, Marcy. Everything goes back to sitcoms with Just Gal. Yes. True. yes yeah. And movies. That's why when he was getting yelled at in the backseat of the car, <laughs> um, he was Devil making my, my friend very upset because he was talking about Devil Wears the Devil Wears Prada. But I think your sister enjoyed it. We were having a good time. She did. She was like surprised. She walked away. She goes, I don't know if you know this, but your friend, I don't think he's straight. <laughs> That's what she said. She goes, I don't well, know that if you made know her more it. Comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> so she's like, I'm not sure if you're Probably aware made her of this more fact. Comfortable in the back seat of the car. She did like you. She did. I liked her too. They're in lot. Paris right now because she loves. I think because she likes Emily in Paris. Yeah, oh, yeah, we sure. love. That's what we bonded on. Yeah, we love that show. Oh, so many people great. I know have gone to I'm Paris. So excited recently, for the third season, and I've never been, and I so I miss traveling. And but you and love and Emily in Paris too. Actually, I've never watched it. I've never oh, watched well, it. Well, the, there's a guy on the show who's so gorgeous. It's like that's the reason we watch. I mean, I've heard other guys. You've heard, yeah. Girls. But <laughs> no, I, I actually, because that guy is, I mean, this guy's, he's unbelievable. <laughs> that's Gabrielle. 
but it's like so funny too. like a show like, can make people like evelyn like you were saying you know so many people have gone there because of that show right oh, that's why yeah. i want to go that's why i want to go i was I talking mean, to I... evelyn oh, sorry. and it makes me want to go now too <laughs> you've never seen it well no but i want to see paris i've seen pictures of paris so that yeah. makes me want to go I i'd like to go there i mean i've always wanted london paris and tokyo were the only three places i've ever wanted to go and I, <laughs> gay Darvis Dingus, shut up, D. Um, <laughs> it's true, though. What are you going to do? That's why I don't think I'm ever going to have any, any trouble teaching my Clueless class. They're like, well, obviously our professor's gay. What man would teach a class on the movie Clueless? My, so my dad actually really early in his career of being a professor, brief, like taught, it wasn't a class on it, but brought up Clueless because it's based on the Jane Austen right. novel, Emma. Um, yes. And he's a professor of literature. So he's, he's taught about it. Sure. Maybe I could talk to him. Sure. I mean, it's been years, but perhaps, yeah. What's it like to grow up with a professor of literature? It's, it's very interesting. I mean, well, so my dad mainly actually, his focus is um, Richard Nixon. He teaches literature and also American studies. Um, Wow. So, yeah, he's actually researching his next book on Nixon um, at the moment. Um, but, yeah, my mom teaches British literature. So I grew up, um, like, I knew a lot of Shakespeare really early um, because Shakespeare isn't, like, my mom's, like, primary focus. She has also um, does a lot of research on Spencer, Dunn, um, a lot of those people. But, yeah, I mean, I just kind of came into reading and a knowledge of those things a lot earlier, I would say, than a lot of other people. That's because, cool. You know, mom, That's yeah, does your mom really... talk about Liz Estrada right now? Eric Estrada? Um, no, Shakespeare. Liz, Liz Estrada, where all the women the women held off and don't have sex oh, politically. What's the I name of the play? So. Liz Estrada. It's not a Shakespeare play. Am I saying it wrong? I don't, I don't know what the Liz Estrada. Liz Estrada. That's yeah. a thing in a Shakespeare play, but it's certainly not one of the no, it is. It is seven play. plays there are. I think play. is it a sonnet? Liz it Estrada. is not a play. Yes, it is. That is not a Shakespeare play. I may be saying it wrong, but yes, it is. Oh, it's, oh, it's um, well, it's that's by Aristophanes. Oh, I but it's like that. in that vein, right? Yeah, well, a lot of a lot of Shakespeare's plays are taken from like Just a, a thousand years early stories. Other than that, you way off. <laughs> well, no, I mean a lot of Shakespeare plays and a lot of plays from that era are like um, older, like or even like ancient stories um, that are just kind of repurposed. Like Romeo and Juliet comes from Aristophanes. an older like Italian uh, oh, story. Dia saying that is Aristophanes. But is he yeah. doing that line from The Odd Couple? Oh, there you go. Now, you guys, have you seen that clip of picture of me looking really young from The Odd Couple? Did you see that, Jessica? What? You didn't see it? I didn't see from that. The Odd Couple. Here, I'll find it for you. Like, uh, you, I knew you would love this. Okay, you guys talk amongst yourselves. Here, let um, me find hi, it. Ellen. You look really good. <laughs> <laughs> we did the female version of the odd couple when I was in high school years oh. ago. That's really fun. Yes, here I'll show you. Wait, wait, wait. Let's wait. Before you show us, before you show us. Yes. Evelyn, mm -hmm. not knowing anything about the odd couple, can you guess which character she played? Let's take a look. Does she play the slob or the neat freak? Uh, hold on a second. I gotta make a decision here. Because you could, you're a good actress, and could I, you could go either way. I have to think about this. I'm going to take a guess. I got a 50 50 shot for no. comedy purposes. And I don't know how funny you were back in, you said high school? Yeah, high school. Were you funny in high school? Were you known as being funny? I wasn't, I was, I was known as being weird. <laughs> People thought no. I was just different. That's still they, tough. That's still tough. Um, you know what? You know, was it, was it, were you the, were you the black? I mean, was there anybody black? With was two I blacks? the black? I was the black. <laughs> Sorry, it came out the wrong way. You know what I meant? Was there, was like the, other the black girl... twins? Evelyn. Was there... The black twins. The black baby daddy. Was the other girl. I didn't troll this fucking school. It's your fucking head. <laughs> oh my goodness. Was the other girl black as well? Or she was, she was white. Everyone was white. Okay. And you were. Either Oscar or Felix. I don't or... remember, but we, you'll you see don't the remember? picture. You, oh, That's were you not I'm the like, lead? You, you, you weren't the lead? Down, no, you can go oh, down this oh, road. Oh, I thought she was either Oscar or Felix. That's what we were doing. Okay. 
No, I played. They it was a female odd couple. Well, oh, which was I know what it was. Just look. Look, how cute there's you me. Look. look at me. Oh my gosh. Oh my god, you are adorable. And on the left here is Elizabeth Claviter, who is a great famous showrunner for Grey's Anatomy. She oh, worked really? with Shonda Rhimes. Apparently, we grew up with Shonda Rhimes, but I didn't know that. Uh, around she grew up. She went to Marion Catholic. So you were one of the poker playing buddies. Yes, and I okay. had a funny scene. Oh wow! Um, and it was it's the it's the female odd couple, which has a little extra. It's like some changes in it. You, you right, see? right, because uh, you know who I think. Wasn't it Sally Struthers and Rita Moreno who originated the roles? Oh, I don't, oh, I don't remember. Of the female version. Um, so did you play the character of Speed? The guy that's I, always loving playing card? Like, he's like, come on, are we getting back to the game? That's why I'm saying I can't remember. It's been such a long time. I don't even remember. I just remember they, the female version had a character for me. Uh, and you see here, we're playing Trivial Pursuit. Gets the female oh. version of the Odd Cup couple off to a start and we're i think we're fighting in it and that's when they oscar and felix get into it wait how do you know a kate o'neill <laughs> that's she's she's in that scene she's in this oh and she didn't realize i was she found this picture of us and posted it on twitter and i was like oh yeah hey how are you that's so fun. i was what, like thanks you, for sharing you, yeah i want to zoom in on it like i want to see what you want you me to zoom can you Let's see. You want to see cute little I don't know Marina? If I can. Was this high school? Or you said right. Doesn't allow me to zoom. Were you like fifteen? I was like, yeah, I was probably sixteen there. I got to send you a picture that you are going to love. Yeah, I can't really zoom it. Sorry, but that is me. You can see my. I got my little nails polished. Yeah. And which I don't do this day, and I, I, I dress feminine here. I don't really dress like that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Look, so thank you jenny but i knew you would like that just guy i figured you know you could yeah and i'm gonna it. send you uh an equal one that's just as hilarious for you um i just sent it by email oh and it's me in a play which i just found online um from a from a camp i went to oh it's not coming through while we're waiting for that evelyn yeah. how about you take us through some of our reviews and we'll get back to perfect just gal trying yeah. to outshine my picture post yeah so we got some great reviews this week um this first one is um from instagram it's in reference to actually not the episode from this week with the episode from last week with um, Amanda Seals and uh, Dr. Christina Greer uh, from Baroque Images on Instagram who said, great episode. Um, and then actually the, the two reviews for this week's episode actually come from the guests themselves who said some really, some really nice things. Um, Keitha Palepu said, I've done a lot of podcasts, but this was one of my favorites. So smart, so funny, so real. When can we do it again? Marina Franklin, Holly Harper, friends like us. Um, which I thought that was really great. And I, I this was the first time that Heath has been on, I think. Um, yes. She was a great guest. I was really interested in, in hearing her story and glad that she was um, able to share with friends like us, which is awesome. Yeah, because this is a very personal story, but we, you know, that we put up on Instagram, but <laughs> she shared it on, you know, on the podcast about her abortion. You know, it's, yeah. it takes a lot of brave. Oh, a lot yeah. of brave women are sharing their stories now because that's usually a very private, quiet story, but we've got to get it out there so that people understand what this is really about. I mean, we have a 10 year old, 10 oh year old who is raped, yeah. you know, um, that story is that, awful. I, I didn't hear about that, but I mean, they can't get pregnant though. I mean, yeah, you can. Is, that's how can a 10 year old get if you if you, if have, you have your period, you can period. get pregnant. Does it come there, that early? Sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. So what is this new news that I missed? I mean This was this past week. So when you were in oh. Ireland, but yeah, basically um what happened was there was uh, in like a press conference or something about um like reproductive justice and health, President Biden said something, told a story about this 10-year-old in Ohio. Um, who was raped and got pregnant. And then because of Ohio's trigger ban, had to go to Indiana to receive an abortion. Um, 
And a lot of people, a lot of conservatives, a lot of Republicans were like, that story is not true. Like, where's the evidence? Like, no one's been arrested for it. Um, And then a few days later, um, like even the Wall Street Journal wrote like an op-ed on basically saying that this is not a true story. Um, And then a few days later, someone actually was arrested. um, And the like, uh, basically the um, attorney general of Indiana was like, trying to prosecute the doctor who um, performed the abortion, Uh, even though abortion is still legal in Indiana. And the lawyer who is currently drafting up an abortion ban law in Indiana was like, he called the 10 year old a woman. He said that the woman should have stayed pregnant. Um, Oh my God. Yeah, it's just really awful. Um, And then of course, Fox News um, said the name of the doctor and put a picture up on the news no um, way yeah so i'm really hoping um Jesus that she stays God. safe <laughs> and is not harmed um that's awful yeah that whole story has just been really- and this is just more proof that men don't see women as like viable like 10 year old girl that's a 10 year old girl yeah. you, you you know when we look at like back in history or we look at some religions culturally what they deem acceptable you there's a show on i think it's on netflix not generalizing all mormons obviously stranger but things yeah not stranger things oh, not stranger but, things no but in utah you know you've seen like some of the results of like when a man is in charge of a religious you know what can happen to young girls you know, and it's allowed. That, that, it's allowed. That, that there's no exceptions, at least, like that. You know, there. I mean, no, that's what yeah. These, all these like laws that are coming into place, there are no exceptions. Um, no and there's exception. even like that's the worst part. No really, exceptions. That's ridiculous. Um, and you know like, damn well all those people that are you know against or whatever for whatever the fuck they're the wrong side. If that happened to their kid or themselves, oh, yeah. of course they would fix it in secret. It's a, such a disaster and two faced. And what happens to are. the Republican Party and their whole platform about n- no government intervention? Yeah, right. Like being like, yeah, it's just it's so hypocritical um, and just really, really awful. And I, wow. I hope that child is um, starting to to heal and you know gets some some therapy and, and help. That sounds just terrible. It sounds horrible, and to be sh- and uh, now to go to something that's even as horrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what? Uh, which one is on the what, left? You know, the damn Yankees. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Is just that great now. or what? <laughs> You've gotta have heart. <laughs> Miles and miles and miles of heart. Huh? A little a young Dave Juskow singing his heart out. Wait, it's which one are right. you? You're the one on the left? The one on the left. Okay. Yeah, yeah you good. can tell that's him. You can't, yeah, you couldn't tell that was me. Well, I was pretty sure, but I just I think it looks exactly it. like me now. <laughs> I, I would like to say he's the one My on hair. the far right, just for the hell of it. Because right, that guy like looks like he's Spanish or something. Yes, that's exactly right. The guy right. in the middle was such an asshole. Oh, really? <laughs> he thought he was better than me. How could he possibly think that? He was not. <laughs> and don't worry, I told him that like a couple of years ago. You still think you're better than me? A couple you well, still worse. know him? No. I don't know any of these assholes. Look, that's because I was the best in the show. Everybody knew it. They the can tell from your dumb enjoyed eyebrows. By all. The the the, uh, the feature. Like yeah. if people ask you, Jessica, what's your your best feature? Would you say your eyebrows? I hate my eyebrows. Oh, really? Yeah, I can't stand it. Like eyebrows are in, in style. Well, I don't like them. They make <laughs> me uncomfortable. Like okay. in the in the in the show Murder in the Building, what's her name? She's got great oh, eyebrows. Selena Gomez, yeah. Selena um, Gomez. Not Selena, the girl, the other girl in the second season. Oh, what I other girl. Yeah, I won't tell you. That. Oh, she's new. Uh, she's not doesn't come on till episode four, so I haven't seen it yet. Oh, okay. Yeah, she's got these very fierce eyebrows. Ooh. I used to have fierce eyebrows, but then I got them waxed by this young lady who didn't want to get vaccinated, but she finally got vaccinated. So there you go. All right, guys. If Repo- Oh, let's see what everyone... If Republicans take control, we will only see more of this insanity. Yep. I agree. I agree. 
I am, you know, and it's it's just like I know Republicans and I wish they would speak up for themselves. Republicans who are not like these Republicans. That's like, me. Get control of your party. I'm trying. Yeah. What do you say? What do you do? I'm remaining a Republican so I can. It's really difficult. I don't know what to do, but you know I have the the view, the right views. Maybe you can become. There has a to be one of us. Libertarian. You know? A what? A libertarian? libertarian? I don't know what that is. <laughs> Evelyn, it's like me. a Republican, but like there are even more like uh, their whole thing is like small government, basically. Um, and government shouldn't have overreaching power. Like Rand Paul is technically a, a libertarian, I think. What's up with the comments? What do you mean, G Eric? Uh, Jessica is a sport fan. Check out the BBC doc, The Real Mo Farah. Who's that? He's a um, Olympic um, gold medal uh, marathon runner. And he was trafficked as a kid? Oh, was he? I didn't know he was trafficked. That's wow. Um, yeah, I mean, he's always been a really inspiring. Runner. Again, every, but most people know that I joined the Republican Party because I was a huge fan of Michael J. Fox and the show uh, Family Ties. Mm -hmm. And um, I've wanted to leave multiple times, but then I realized both parties have their flaws. And I figure maybe if I stay a Republican, maybe I can make a change. Maybe I can make a difference. Maybe there's a couple of us out there that have just normal people views. Somebody has to remain. But then they see you at the Broadway <laughs> theater. Well, that is problematic. And you're you're in the audience going, <laughs> That's right, Marcy. <laughs> They can't. They can't have and she you. dances and she prances on the <laughs> way. Oh, oh, oh. And they're like, enough of that one. Like, what are you? <laughs> That's true. With a little this uh, and a little that. Uh. Oh my gosh. All right, we do have to get out of here. You Wait, guys, we could do more damn Yankees. I know all the well, songs. You guys have been there so. There was this waitress awesome. back in Kansas City, built for comfort, dumb but pretty. Yeah. Yeah, Marge, no, you're we perfect. Sure did smell sweet. You. Got her up to my hotel suite. Yeah, yeah. Marge is here, everybody. <laughs> Marge, Look. Marge. Marge, when'd you put your middle name in here? Wouldn't you do it? I didn't know you were hyphenated. We let go. Good for you. Yeah, we were talking about you, but we're about to get out of here, Marge. We were talking about how you moved. You know, Marge is a true New Yorker. And when she first moved to Arizona, we would stand in line. She goes, look at this. I got to deal with these people. They take all day. <laughs> I was like, Marge, I don't think you'll make it here. She's like, look how slow they are. And then she would turn on the news. And she's like, and then I have to hear this Republican news. But you know what? We need to be in those red states. Am I right? Am I right? You have to be in the red states in order because... Voting wise, it's the map. We need blue and the red. Yeah. You can't, yeah. can't keep talking about leaving. My niece kept saying, she goes, I want to leave for Europe, London. I go, London's a mess. This war. Forget about it. Anyway, <laughs> forget about it. <laughs> hey, yo. Hey, yo. Hey, what are you doing over there? Huh? Just go. <laughs> You're not paying attention. Well, you know, I'm working. All right, guys. Well, well we four o'clock is when the shifts change. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, in Kentucky, drowning in red. All right. Yeah. Well, I hey, March, we do have Kentucky. to go. I'm sorry that you just joined. We're here every Saturday, though. So if you want to talk to me, March, come on, come, come to the, come to our live on YouTube. Listen to my podcast. It's called Friends Like Us. That's why we do this. Leave us a comment. DJ Eric Prince, you were asking about the comments. Well, Evelyn read it. You know, we could have some more that we could read. You know, that actually helps boost our numbers. I was raised the same way. Yeah. Did. So definitely leave a, a review on Apple Podcasts and I yes. will read it. <laughs> and tell some other people that you know to listen to the podcast. Yeah. Um, this week we have coming out for you um oh god who did i have on i am I, I can't remember i've had so many good guests i know but i can't even good. remember i know tomorrow i'm recording with zainab johnson mm -hmm. who is in upload and oh uh, we had aaron jackson we oh, had um uh, mia jackson and um you know we had suba a girl 
and it's it's just a comic conversation about everything that's going on, which is always good to have. We also yeah. talked about the Dave Chappelle special that dropped that yeah. wasn't really promoted. No, you didn't know about it. You have to no. like actually go to Netflix to and see it. And was nominated for an Emmy immediately. Really? Or maybe that was a different one. No, no, that was his other one, the oh. closer. I know. I know everybody was up in arms. That's why I know what was happening. Yeah. Hey, March, I will. I want to come back. Um. But also, I watched it, the special. I did watch the Dave Chappelle. It was not bad. It was pretty good. It was actually very honest. Um, he has these conversations. He's being he's living his truth. He's talking about, you know, how he may have gotten it. You know, like when he, the kids had really didn't want his name up on the school. Mm. You yeah. know, so he's talking about that. And hey, can can you uh, can I just ask one thing? Did you I just. David Tell just told me this about an hour ago about this comedian that committed suicide. Yes, did I didn't want to. Did want you to say it earlier? It. I didn't want to talk about it because it's just so sad. And I don't know. Did you know him? I did. I didn't know him well, but it's you know. I just his name is Jack. Um, I'm sorry. I didn't mean. I just. Well, it's just it's it's so fresh, raw, and new, and it it, it always is very sad to me when a young comedian dies i didn't know how he passed i didn't know that was it and that's even shocking to me but he was in the prime of his career he was about to rise as a star yeah, the he was thing, in right? you the know funny. with sam J. blackish I, I met him in montreal i wasn't close with him but i i knew him and i remember having such a good conversation and i always just say you know we got to look out for each other we got to you know whenever i see sp specifically young brothers a lot of them are dying too young, and I don't know what that means, but um, it's happening a lot more with them lately. Um, and we got to look into our mental, you know, what's going on. There's a new number. There's a new hotline. There's not just 911. There's 311. But now I think the number is 988. And yeah. what's that one? It's Did the come? National Suicide Hotline. Yeah. Yeah, am I right? Is it 988? Let me look it up. I think it might be 998, but let me look. That's interesting. 988. Please I didn't know there was that number. Oh, no, it is 988. It just, yeah. it just dropped. About a year it ago, just, I could have used that dropped. number. Yeah, it's called, it's 988, yes. That is great, yeah. Well, you know um, what? I, one time, uh, around about a year ago, I Googled I how to kill myself or something, and um, yes. it came up. that that Not that number, but the it was something that I put in there, came up immediately, called this number, which was good. Well, I didn't, though. It's just very tragic. And it's like I, you know, when a comedian also passes, you just stop because, you you know, you're providing happiness to so many people that well, what's happening when you're yourself not what's going on, you know. And I I ran into a couple of younger comics who were really just out of sorts last night. Um, and I had to just stop and listen and hug yeah. and pray for the pray. You know, so yeah, we will get through this time though. I think a lot of people need to be there for everyone. You know, sometimes you, you'll pass a person on the street and you can tell something's going on with them. Don't just keep it moving. Yeah. See what's going on with them. I, I have, um, I've had this moment several times with a couple of people where I'll just pick it up, something off a vibe. And I'll go and I'll call them or I'll go, hey, 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 what's going on with you? Yeah. And and it and that person, I won't say who it was, but that person said to me later, thank you for being such a good friend. I was really going through a, a horrible time and it just meant the world that you stopped to, to ask. A lot of people don't. Yeah. So try to be there. It's, it's a very heavy time for people very heavy a lot of my friends are not okay right just gal that's right um, you were very kind to me uh when i was going through some bad stuff a lot of people and there's ways to address it without being you know on the nose with it sometimes you you know you take them you know when i was place. in high school i <clears throat> i was i had this the same problem and i thought that there should be a class i remember thinking like i would like to go to the white house and tell them there should be a class for people like us that that talks about it this is in 1982 um it's weird that it's really taken this long to 
put something together and really there still isn't really anything together. I mean, there is, it's better than it was, but there was no one to talk to back then. And I was like, there should be a class on it, like a class, like a health class that you have to take and just discuss stuff like this. I mean, people are getting better at it, but I remember thinking about that, something I was trying to put together, even when I was in college, I was, when I was in the teaching program, I'm like, I'd like to put this together. But uh, obviously, I didn't see it through because I'm a slacker. And and they didn't, you know, people were like, ah, I don't know. That sounds depressing. <laughs> <laughs> but look, Hectech is like, guys, I'm bad at consoling depressed people. And you, yeah, you know, you don't have to be great at it. I just think um, sometimes you just do what you can. Yeah. You know, we all it's, it's not easy. You know, sometimes um, I judge people who are not good when I was depressed or sad. I get more sad, you know, but people do what they can. And the little that you can do is always better than nothing. Sometimes just hug. I, for me, I like to hug people when I see them. Of course, I'm wearing my mask. And, you know, I like to ask what's going on. And if that doesn't work for you, sometimes a gentle touch. Touch sometimes does more than words. I find a human touch during very intense moments where people feel alone. They just need a little human connection. And, and that's, that's why it. I always listen to Rick Springfield's song, Human Touch. We all, all right. need okay. the human. Thank you, Evelyn. Now, that was not me. And that was beautiful. Well <laughs> done, Evelyn. Thank Evelyn. you so much. Evelyn is learning how to use that button. Thank yeah. you, girl. Thank yeah, you, girl. All see. right. So we're going to get out of here. <laughs> I can't believe Evelyn has that power now. This stinks. She sure does. She's I trying do, it yeah. out today. That is not fair. Yeah. So um, we're going to get out of here. Uh, Evelyn, where can our listeners find you? And yes. Um, yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Evelyn G. Frick. Um, I don't have any shows scheduled at the moment. Um, but yeah, you'll see any updates from me there. Yes, just go. Uh, just uh, Tuesdays, the Comedy Cellar nightly show, six o'clock on YouTube. Yes, and for me, I do have my headline show at the Fat Black Pussycat. You guys are not on it this time. It's not because I don't want you. It's just I've got so many mouths to feed. Um, but I love you guys, and you'll be on my next one. How's that? <laughs> Sounds okay. good. Tuesday at seven p.m. at the Fat Black Pussycat. I'll be headlining in New York City. That's part of the Comedy Cellar. Go to ComedyCellar.com. I'll put it right here in the, so you have it, ComedyCellar.com. If you know someone in the New York area and you're like, what do I do on a Tuesday? Hey, go see, go see my girl, Marina Franklin at the Fat Black Pussycat. Working on some newish material. I will be All promoting right. your show on my show. Aww. but they won't be able to get there because they'll be on it's this tuesday i know but i always promote the seven or eight o'clock shows oh oh okay awesome awesome well thank you all so much for joining us every saturday we'll be back next saturday we're not going nowhere so um wear your mask get vaccinated get boosted up be careful out there there is a new variant so it's very it's very contagious so do what you can to stay safe and remember this Black Lives Matter. Oh, yes, they do.